Hi guys and welcome to Hopper's Muchbot Vlogs. How are we doing? Right, so today is a different vlog. Um, just thought I'd come on and give you a gift, different sort of vlog. Uh, you're probably not expecting this vlog actually, to be fair, because I've not announced it. But I thought I'd go into quite some details about, you know, what happened over potentially the last um, couple of years. Um, within Hopper's Motorsport Vlogs before we even started the vlogs um, potentially getting this one out here because I thought it might be a good one to share to be honest so I'm going to talk about potentially um, you may know some of you guys may know some of you guys may not that I actually passed my driving test um, on the third attempt um, back in I think it's 2017 I think and I just thought I'd share my story about um, my driving tests um, purely because you know it's never really been touched on uh, prior to a live in a live video situation or a vlog so we'll uh, get started into the vlog then so basically yes I have a full UK driving license that is a requirement if you want to drive legally on the roads here in the United Kingdom you can learn to drive with a provisional driving license but to legally drive without tuition or without um, a driving test you have to have a full UK driving license or full license I'm sure it's kind of similar around the world but obviously different procedures etc obviously there is uh, a bit of a difference over here if you apply for or learn to drive in an automatic car then you have to have an automatic driving license um, to say that you only can drive an automatic car it's a bit weird because obviously um, you know, over I think over like in Australia they have a different test for a manual as well as an auto. I'm not too sure, but I've heard there's all, all sorts of different um styles of driving test going on around the world. But yeah, so obviously you know, um, 2015, late 2015, I was thinking about learning to drive again. I learned to drive when I lived with my dad obviously um couple, eight years ago before that uh, i think it was when i was 18 uh, i looked at driving an automatic at first and i thought you know um i did okay i wasn't actually getting up to me test you know i was i was just learning to drive see what it's like uh, driving a car um obviously on the road um but obviously there came a chance where i went away from home uh, to live away from home to go and study motorsport at the time when I was learning to drive I thought I'm going to jack that in because you know potentially yeah it's some people might put in the comments saying why didn't you continue with the uh, with the driving well I, I was living away from home I didn't really want to fork out money for obviously going to college and then forking out money to potentially doing driving lessons in a different area you know it's some, an area I wasn't used to and I kind of just said, well, I'll just concentrate doing um, the motorsport course in the first place. So that was, that obviously was my first experience of driving. But to learn to drive then in 2015, towards the end of 2015, um, I got in touch with a local driving instructor in my area where I am in Cumbria. And uh, I basically said, have you got any availabilities to teach me to learn to drive? And at first I was thinking, you know, do I go back automatic or do I go manual? And at first I was like debating, well, okay, if I go auto, then if I get a car, it has to be automatic, which then lim limits the options that I want if I have, want to have a car. So I then thought, okay, we'll go manual, we'll try manual, we'll try, you know, we'll try driving, learn to drive a manual car. And to be quite honest with you, at first, yeah, it was daunting. Yeah, it's kind of new to me. It's kind of like, okay, I've got a gear stick. I've got an extra pedal. You know, I've got a clutch pedal. And in an auto, you don't have a clutch pedal. You just have the gear shift. So you select, like, park, neutral, drive, reverse. But where's in the manual gearbox? You've got potentially five or six gears next year that you've got to... That controls your speed. So... Overall, I thought, you know, yeah, okay, I'll take the plunge and I'll go and learn to drive a manual car. So, 
late 2015, November time, I did my first ever driving lesson in a manual car. Not too sure how it was going to go. Um, at first I was like, I was excited at the time as well as a bit of bag of nerves. So I kind of got into that, into the swing of basically using the clutch and using the gears. And I've, I've stalled, a, I've stalled a few times, you know, I'm not going to, not going to lie, you know, stalling a car when you know for a fact you've got to find the biting point in the clutch and you've got to get the speed, the rev right so then that can get into the right gear so it doesn't stall again. At first, yeah, okay, you know, stalled a bit, but it's natural, you know, it does happen. It can happen when you're driving, in, when you haven't, when you've passed your test, you know, you can stall the car if you're not careful and, you know, it's easily done, but so obviously getting into early part of 2016 you know i was going through as you may have seen in another video i was going through a tough patch losing me nine grand within two months of each other and you know i was, I was thinking well what's going to happen because you know i'm still learning to drive i'm not ready to do a mock test i'm still not ready to do my theory test so with that in mind, I then obviously set me ta I set a target where potentially you know I'll go for my theory test sometime in the year because obviously you know I'm get progressing and getting there. But then obviously you know I took me I have to obviously take your theory test. You know theory test is multiple choice questions as well as hazard perception. I went to go and do my first um, theory test um, for the first time. Uh, went to a test centre where I live, um, and I failed by a couple of marks, which I was kind of a bit, ugh. you know, I was a bit peed off, should I say? You know, I was a bit like, oh, I've missed out by four marks on my theory test first time round. And then I thought, right, no, I'm going to go home and rebook it for the Saturday. So I took the test on the Monday night. I think it was the Monday or the Tuesday night that week. And then, obviously, because I failed, I then said, right, to my instructor, I'm going to rebook it for this weekend. So, in other words, Saturday. And I remember somehow thinking, well, Saturday I'm due at work. Uh, which, you know, is going to be a bit of a mammoth task going from where I live in Cumbria to where my dad lives to go to the town where my dad lives where I've been brought up on most of my life to go and do my theory test and I got up early on the Saturday I, book, I re booked my theory test I thought, right, I'm going to re book my theory test this time I'm gonna nail it and I take Jen with me most of you guys know who Jen is Jen is my partner my lifeline of hoppers about spot vlogs you know and we go to the test center Jen can't go in because obviously it's me doing the test and might think she's trying to make me cheat the test so I pass it potentially so she has to go and walk around and have a look around the shops why I go and do my theory test. So I'm sat there doing my theory test, I get out and I get my result and I just say, you you, you passed, you know, you've passed your theory test, well done. They, they weren't meant to really tell me. I was meant to have a look at it and say, yeah, I've passed. But, um, so I passed my theory test second time round and I was quite over, over the moon. So I end up telling Jen, I end up telling everyone that I passed my theory test. Um, for the second you know, second attempt, and this is where, you know, I had to go come back to where I am now in Cumbria to go to work in the evening, and, you know, it was a bit of a flying visit, should we say, because obviously, you know, going to do my theory test and then going coming back home for ready for work on the Saturday evening. So then, obviously, after passing my theory test, we were then getting ready to say, well, should we do a couple of mock tests? Mock tests is where you basically 
drive your car like it is a, a driving test. So, you know, I, I did quite well on a few of them. I failed quite, maybe one or two, maybe three. I can't remember top of my head. But I was really into, you know, doing the uh, mock driving test and get, and get and then eventually it led up to me doing my actual driving test so on the day of your actual driving test and funny enough it is actually a year a couple of years, i think it's about seven years now it's maybe yeah seven years to this date or maybe six years to this date where so this is now 2017 so flash forward a couple of years and um it's yeah i think it's six six years to the day as of today that my first ever driving test was actually on um so today is actually the 22nd of march 2023 so yeah it's probably about right um <coughs> excuse me where i was doing my driving test and so yeah basically what happens on your driving test an hour before your driving test you basically have a two hour slot with your instructor um, because you have a bit of a drive round to make sure you're prepared for your driving test uh, otherwise you're wasting gosh knows how much I think it was about 64 quid when I did my test I think it might have gone up now um, and um, you have a bit of a drive round with your instructor then you go to the test centre you book yourself in and this is where I kind of, I hate to say struggle because of obviously with the anxiety that I have with my autism. I'll explain a bit about this as we go on into the vlog. Um, but yeah, you go to the test centre with your instructor, you know, you go and basically go into the, go into the driving test centre if there is one and you go and say you're here for your driving test, you hand over your provisional driving license to behind the counter, or you have it with you, you can have it with you, I think, if I remember rightly, I had it with me. Um, but then, obviously, you wait for the examiner to come out, and, okay, me being me, when I went to do my driving test, um i was literally at first i felt happy because i drove well the day before my driving test as well as the hour before the test and i was kind of feeling ready for let's rock and roll you know let's see what we do and so the examiner comes out says my name i give him a provisional driving license so he checks it that's all in date the address is correct etc there's no endorsements on it or whatever you know because you know some people with provisional, provisional driving license may have a moped or they may have committed a crime you know maybe got points on the license which mine's a clean license um you know i never never ever been in trouble you know, I've learnt to drive with an instructor and, you know, I've not had a moped or anything, you know, but that's a different story. Um, but I basically give the examiner my driving licence and then we went out to the car park where the car I was driving, I was driving, I'll be honest with you, I was driving a Hyundai i13 in silver, quite a nice car to be honest, the car I was learnt to drive in. Um, I felt really happy driving that car. It felt really nice actually to, to drive. Um, so we went out into the car park, I had to read a number plate. Obviously, yes, I wear glasses all the time. You may see uh, some photos where I don't wear my glasses. It's because I don't like wearing glasses when I have my photos taken for some bizarre reason. I don't know what that is, but uh, I had to read the number plates um, from a distance and then we got into the car and pers um, did show me tell me questions you know you may have to show how you um turn the wipers on or turn the headlights on or put the window down and can you tell me what would you do in a situation let's say if you had to put the hazard lights on let's you know just use that as an example um 
so yeah, uh, we did the show me, tell me questions, and then we um, continued to then progress to getting out the driving test centre. Um, this is my first attempt, by the way, I'm on about. And I remember going along quite well. There was a couple of mistakes here and there that he was marking on his test sheet paper because you have a, obviously a sheet of paper that the examiner marks, your gearing, your steering, etc. And we go we go to a little village outside where I live, and we got to perform. We had to perform an emergency stop. I've done uh, driving test has changed since I've done it, so you know this is why I'm doing this vlog out here to give you guys my experience of uh, doing the driving test. So yeah, um, we came to do an emergency stop. Did that perfectly. Other behold, though I stupidly, and this is what I'm going to say now. Uh, stupidly failed on um, and this is how it exactly failed my driving test uh, my first ever attempt uh, driving test um, I didn't look round enough after the, doing the emergency stop I was absolutely devastated when I found out that's exactly why I failed it is a serious fault because you, you're you not paying attention to what's around you um, I slapped myself on the wrist for that um, it wasn't you know was it was it was the only thing that failed the driving test everything else was absolutely spot on so at the time um going round back to test center um you know i was thinking oh is, have i passed you know have i done really well and i go into the test center i then get told by the examiner unfortunately i failed um which I was absolutely devastated with I was gobsmacked um, I basically um, couldn't believe it he said yeah you didn't look around after the emergency stop unfortunately it's a serious fault and my instructor was like okay well never mind you know you did really well up until then you know we'll go again in a couple of months so a couple of months have passed and I can't remember, I think it was May or June time. Yeah, I think it was actually May time, actually. Must have been May. Yeah, it must have been, must have been April or May. A couple of weeks time passed after my uh, first attempt of a driving test. This is now where my anxiety literally goes into overdrive on my second attempt. I'm not going to lie and I'm not going to, and I'm going to excuse the language, I'm not going to bullshit what happened I really want to tell you from the heart exactly what happened during my second attempt of my driving test so after fa after failing the first time round we thought well I think you know we might as well go again we'll go again and we'll potentially this time try and pass first time second time because uh, my instructor had quite a high rate of pass rates which kind of spurred me on a bit um so coming up to my driving test the, the the day before the hour before or i think yeah because the day on my first driving test it snowed which i remember rightly it snowed but it then cleared up in time for my driving test so yeah um that was a bit of a weird one could have been could have Ended up having my test first time, my first driving test ever cancelled because of the weather. I forgot to mention that, but yeah. Um, so second attempt at my driving test, um, same procedure, uh, going into the test centre, giving your driving licence to the examiner. Funny enough, this is where I feel like, what the hell, you know. I went into the test centre with my driving instructor, who was really nice. Um, I'll mention his name after this uh, vlog, just to give a shout out. Um, so I um, went into the test centre with my driving instructor, as I say. Same protocol as per usual. And believe it or not, it is the same examiner that failed me the first time around. You should have seen my face. I was like, what the, you know, what the actual fuck, excuse the language, um, Am I getting examined by the same examiner that failed me the first time round? Um, 
this is then when the anxiety starts to now creep in because it's the same examiner that you've had first time round, that failed you first time round. Other behold, I didn't take my driving instructor on either of my tests. Um, so obviously me first, second and third, because we'll get to the third one eventually. <laughs> but other behold, at the time the examiner decided, you know, the exa his examiner was there as well to make sure he was doing the driving test correctly. And I, can't, I couldn't refuse to have that examiner, the extra examiner that was examining the driving test examiner in the car. You signed a disclaimer saying you, you, you know, do you agree to have an extra person in the car? If you decline that, you, you may not do your driving test. So this was now setting the anxiety kind of in to overdrive. Um, which I'm not gonna lie, and as I say, I'm not gonna bullshit about it. And I literally sat down in the driving seat in the car with the examiner in the front, his examiner in the back. There's t there's another extra person in the car now watching my driving as well. So if anything goes to balls up, should we say, you know, he's also gonna be worried that the examiner isn't t isn't doing the test properly so okay we go round town um and we go up to top end of town and there's a road top end of where i am at the moment um and to go down back down the one way system um you have to go up, you know, if you don't want to go through town to get up through the one way, to get back onto the one way system, you uh, have to go up over the hills. And I was hesitant quite a lot of times trying to decide when to go. And this is when my anxiety was kicking in. I could feel myself sweating. I could feel my heart racing. I could feel literally I was going to break down into a nervous wreck. And bear in mind, I still carried on with the driving test. But there was times where it was getting a bit really bad, you know, and I wasn't concentrating what was going on. I had four serious faults in the end. Um, one of them was where I pulled out of a junction going left and there was a van going right. Couldn't see around the van so I wouldn't know what would happen. So I could have easily potentially had a crash or I could have had an accident. So I had four serious faults which the examiner that failed me first time then told me I failed the second time and said I had four serious faults. And there was me saying, what the, f you know, y you know, I had your examiner in the car. I didn't argue about it, but I was like, you had your examiner in the car. I really didn't want to agree to this. It's put more pressure on me sort of attitude. But I was like, right, okay. And my driving instructor was like, right, have a think what you do because I'm I was about to go away uh, for a week with Jen so or have a couple of days away with Jen at the time so I had to have a think what I was going to do about my driving um which you know I thought I need some time to think what I'm going to do because if I'm going to fail the test again I might as well just you know not bother so other behold come June 2017 I was ready to go again um I was ready to go again I think it was 2017 it must have been 2017 I'm just trying to remember the time frame um but yeah I was ready to go again for the third time third time this time and I was quite I don't know how to put it I was kind of worried that I'd have the same examiner as last time and things were going to go to shit. Um, I kind of felt at first that, you know, I had so much riding on this attempt. Um, because I felt like if I failed, and this is what I'm going to mention at the end of this vlog, um, some, some stuff you may not know. Um, but... 
I then went to the team test centre, as per usual. Same protocol, as you know. <coughs> Unfor be old, I then get a different examiner. And I was like, get in. You know, someone else this time. This time it could be look on my side. Other behold, I was a bit wary of what potentially would be going through my head. You know, with the anxiety. However, at the time, this time around doing my driving test, um, I was going round and I was doing quite well. At the time of my driving test on my third attempt, there was, I think it was an ambulance that I needed to get past. So that was the first time. I never knew what to do in that situation. Obviously, you know, in your theory testing, your um, hazard perception, it tells you what to do in that. Uh, or you know what to, you should know what to do. So luckily I did that with ease. Um, at first I went on the dual carriageway, which, you know, isn't far from us. And I went too slow, I got too slow going onto it. But at first I thought he was going to put me down as a serious fault because I went too slow on the on the dual carriageway. Other behold, no I didn't. Uh, it looked like I didn't. Um, and then, you know, we're doing quite a few bits around town, a few manoeuvres, etc. And then gone back to near the test centre because the driving instructor, not the driving instructor, the driving test examiner didn't go back to the test centre. I think he wanted you to pull up. So then, you know, it saves you going into the test centre. Because um, then, you know, you're not going to be embarrassed, I think, about whether you passed or failed. Um, pulled up. He was totting up everything. And he said, how do you think you did? And my instructor's there listening in. And I, I said to him, I think I failed. Because of certain bits and pieces. And he went, I'd like to say, Mr. Hopley, congratulations, you've passed. And I was like, okay, yes. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, get in. And I, was, I couldn't believe it. I literally nearly broke down in tears. I literally wanted to cry so badly with emotion because I was proud that I finally did my driving test. And other behold... Um, because obviously after your driving test, you can't then drive home. You aren't legally allowed to drive home. Um, so me instructor had to drive me home three times during the tests. Um, he was quite over over the moon with that I passed eventually. Um, and yeah, I remember get, getting dropped off. I remember because I got dropped off around the corner from home because I was living somewhere else at the time not where I am now and I remember I think I, I think I tried to ring Jen but Jen didn't answer her phone um, I was quite surprised why Jen didn't answer her phone so Jen's at my old spot because she was coming to see me or she was yeah she come to see me she knew I had my driving test so she come to see me uh, I played a prank on her at first saying I failed <laughs> because I had the driving test pass certificate behind my back. She's like, oh, well, you'll have to go again then, won't you? I said, no, I've passed. And she's like, oh, you <laughs> idiot. And she said, oh, you know, obviously, you know, she congratulated me. And then we went to go and see one, a mate of mine that was having a bit of a bad day. Um, shout out to Ed Mudd. Um, Ed, if you're watching this, mate. You know exactly how that was meant to me that day like when I passed my test. It made you know it made his day better. And then I told everyone that I passed my driving test and got all well done. So yeah, I like to um, give a special mention to Glyn Jameson. If you're watching this, Glyn, um, not seen you for a while, mate. I hope things are going well. Um, we won't talk about the football, but you know, um, obviously you beat us twice this season. <laughs> Being a Leeds fan, but never mind. Uh, thank you for your tuition, um, you know, teaching me how to drive that many years ago. Um, you know, I couldn't believe how, when we got there and we passed my driving test, um, you could tell how much it meant to me. Um, so, yeah, thank you for giving up your time to teach me how to drive. And 
you know, I still don't have the car, I'm still on my push bike. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is, but um, thank you for that. I also like to thank everyone that supported me throughout my driving test. Um, throughout my driving test when I was going for them, being supportive. And, yeah, as I say, there was some bad parts about the um, about what happened. So, when I failed first time round, I kind of knew for a fact it's not the end of the world. You know, you can go again. People pass ages, you know, people may pass it the 11th time or the 5th time or the 20th time. You know, so when I passed, when I eventually passed, I was buzzing after my third attempt. But after the second attempt, I was considering, and this is where some people don't know this, I was considering jacking in driving, driving lessons and then potentially going for me driving test again. I really was feeling down in the dumps. I felt like I couldn't. There was something obviously wrong with me. I couldn't drive. You know, I looked like I broke down into a thousand pieces, which I didn't, luckily. You know, I didn't get angry about it, but I felt like I couldn't do it. I felt like, nah, something, something is actually really wrong with me driving. Um, you know, they're not saying anything because they don't want to upset me. But a persever perseverance paid off. You know, I went again on my third attempt and then I passed. So it does show me, you know, keep going, don't give in. So, you know, that is that. And I feel like there's a lot of, you know, with a lot of anxiety kicking in the second time, it was, you know, I think that's exactly what made me make them four serious faults. You know, the anxiety got the bigger and better of me. But we got there in the end, we passed the time. And as I say, it, it, I'd, I'd rather share this story with you guys than literally not, you know. And at the end of the day, when I passed the time, I was buzzing i was literally like getting this is exactly what we wanted we wanted this we wanted that and yeah it, it didn't affect me in any way but maybe sometimes it is but if you've enjoyed this vlog guys please do give it a massive thumbs up i really hope you like and subscribe to hoppers about spot vlogs um i'm looking forward to producing more content very soon uh, this one was just a bit of a random one that I thought of um, because many of you guys may not know. But uh, hopefully you will see us for a interesting vlog sometime soon. We've got a very amazing vlog coming out in coming out in May this year. As I say, we are going to be trackside for the British Touring Cars at Snetterton in May. I'm looking forward to being back trackside after having a year away uh, last year. Um, it's going to be mega, it's going to be